last words in the movie are, his love will endure, his love for him, meaning his love for David, will endure forever. He dies, that's it. He died to, he actually died not scared of the king. And the king, like I said, he's the head of the nation. You don't want to, most people, even a judge, you know in that saying, tell it to the judge, when somebody, when the accuser and the accused start arguing, they'll say, oh, I'll tell it to the judge. But when the judge is right in front of you, you, you get intimidated <laughs> because he decides whether if you go to prison or you don't, or she decides whether you go to prison or you don't. You're guilty or you're not. You're not going to say, it's easier said to say, it's easier said, tell, tell it to the judge than it is done. Easier said than done. Well, now we jump to the, to the present champion, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Lord is born, the Lord is um, around, King Saul, no, King Herod, some of people are telling him, hey, there's a new king about to be born. What does King Herod think? Oh, a new king's going to take my throne. When really he's not going to take the throne. He's just the, the head leader of his tribe. He's the leader of his, the people that believe and worship him. But he's thinking, King Herod is thinking that he's going to take over the throne. So when the three wise men or the three kings or whoever they are, three people say that they're the three kings, some people say that they're three wise men, some people they say they're three astrologers, whatever you want to label them. When they go and ask King Herod, can we go visit this future king? What does King Herod say? He's like, you two, you can go visit him as long as you come back to me, bring me word. So when you have found him, that way I'll know you have found him. But when, he, when they leave, they sing the Lord, born. They start falling at his feet, start worshiping him, giving him sweet-smelling frankincense, myrrh, and um, what was the other one? It was sweet-smelling frankincense, myrrh, some, yeah, and gold. And... The astrologers or the three wise men or the three kings decide not to go not to go back to King Herod. What happens? King Herod gets angry, goes throughout the entire nation, and has um and has every baby boy from ages from the first day they were born, or from the first minute they're born, to two years old killed. Now when you're killed, now in those days they could, they killed them by sword, they killed them by bashing their head on rocks, they killed them by throwing them off cliffs, they killed them by, by strapping them to horses and having the horses run in different places, you know, just torturous deaths. And um, that still goes on today in some places where, you know, that's, that's death by punishment. You get tied up to four horses, one Lim gets tied up to one horse, the other one gets tied up to another, and the, the third and the fourth get tied up to the other four, and they, get pulled, they pull you apart. Or they throw you off a cliff, or they, they chop your head off with a guillotine or, or sword, whatever. Or they stone you to death. But while the Lord is, all of a sudden the Lord grows up, starts preaching, and when the first day they're preaching... They're Mary, the first day he's preaching, Mary and Joseph go out and try to find him. They're saying, they find him in a temple. They, they say, Joseph replies, Jesus, your mother and I have been looking for you everywhere. Where have you been? And then, he's, then Jesus, then the Lord says, no, the Lord's only 11, 12 years old. He says, why have you worried about me? Surely you want me to go on about my father's business. You know, my father meaning the God in heaven. And a prophet, a priest, somebody else backs him up. He's a, this, this man, this little boy has been blessed by the wisdom of God. Whatever he knows, he knows, but it's been truly, he's been truly blessed by the Lord, by, by God. Well, the Lord grows up 
even more. Finally, one of these verses, this is where the doubt now in people start coming in about him. This is one of my favorite verses as to their age, as to actually the first little girl's age right here. I first, I heard it in a Christian cartoon we used to play in the Church of the Nazarene when Pastor Danny Ayala was there. It's called Superbook, those of you who remember that. There's a, there's a, um, there's a part in the Bible, and it's in one of the Gospels where, and it's in the Gospels, actually it's in all the Gospels. It's, um, it says, the, whole, the Lord Jesus was in a house. He's preaching so well that every cra- that even outside it's packed around the house. People are just even going by the windows outside just to hear. Well, these four men come up with a stretcher. They come to the house with a stretcher. They go around the house with a stretcher. This, there's a man, the fifth man, he's on the, he's on the stretcher. What does he say? The, the man is so much in pain, he probably can barely move his head. Probably just wants to die already. He's so much in pain that only the Lord knows what, what he was feeling. Well, the men try so hard to get him into the house, finally they find an access to the roof. They dig through the roof. Like I said, here's where the doubt starts coming in. The Lord's right in the middle of a sermon, but the Lord starts seeing this asphalt fall around them. They lower the man down. They ask one of the men, one of, his, one of the man's friends says, Lord, forgive us this rude interruption. There was no other way to get him to get this man in here. He's a, our, man, our friend here has been, has been paralyzed for so many years. Just look upon his heart because he wants to be healed. What, here's where the greatest lead, one of the greatest leaders, the so-called religious leaders, stands out. This is where the doubt kind of comes in. Right before the Lord heals the man, he says, who do you think you are thinking you're God? Only someone else can have. Only God himself can perform miracles. The Lord just looks at him and says, hey, the, this man is, wants to be healed. The Lord just goes right up to him. Man, pro, the man is, pro, like I say, he's so much in pain. The man probably just turns his head barely like this. Can't even move. Just barely has enough strength to turn his head, maybe just a little bit. And the Lord tells him, pick up your bed and walk, for your sins are already forgiven. The man just turns his head, not, not with pain, goes like this to his hands. Everything in the man just now just comes back like nothing, like all the pain is gone. Gets up and walks. Everybody now is in shock that they just saw a man who looks like he wanted to die get up and just walk like nothing, just walking like this, up, up and down that whole place. Even his friends are shocked and they're saying, whoa, that's, wait a minute, he just looked like he, he was almost ready to die. How is it that he's walking? And all of a sudden, like I said, some people are already doubting them, the high religious leaders, I think they're so high that they're just, Finally, that they're just starting to doubt the Lord. And um, finally, all this doubt just comes in. The Lord just keeps going. Everybody's doubting him. Even Peter. And Peter, it says, um, what is it? Come to feeding the 5,000. This kind of actually happens today. Some people, and I'd advise you, some people don't do this. Try not to do this. Um, I'm going to advise you why. The Lord is feeding the 5,000. He hands some, all of a sudden the disciples go up to him and say, Lord, it's very late in the afternoon. There's nobody here. There's nothing here for everybody, for anybody to eat. Why not just send them to the nearby villages or the nearby town to buy something to eat? The Lord's already thinking like, no, if I do that, the cr- some people in the crowd are not going to come back or the crowds are not going to come back at all. 
the Lord just says, it's not necessary to send them away. You feed them. And then the, the disciples are saying,